like cheesy, tryna run two million up like pee. Break down what happened to Steve Francis uh, right uh, here. You know, it was just, it was, that was a big, so big some man. misunderstanding. You know, it was a mi misunderstanding. That's all I got. <laughs> what happened about. to Steve Francis? You know, he, he, he just, he just. Shout out to Steve Francis did. and Maserati oh, man, Music, man. man, man, man. You know, he got a label? Confrontation happened. Yeah, confrontation. <laughs> to where he got in the mix and, and you know, things happened. Jay Prince Sr., or also known as James Prince, is a prominent figure in Houston, Texas, with a significant influence in the music industry and broader communities. While he has been associated with various rumors and allegations regarding mob ties, it's essential to note that he has never been formally charged or convicted of any such activities. Now, here's a breakdown of his background and influence. In his early life, James Prince was born in Houston, Texas, and in the 1980s, he founded Rap-A-Lot Records, which became one of the pioneering labels in Southern hip hop. Rap-A-Lot would play a crucial role in establishing Houston as a major force in the rap scene. As far as his business ventures and influence beyond the music, Jay Prince has been involved in various business ventures, including boxing promotion through his company, Jay Prince Boxing. Hey, baby. How does it feel, man, to have your artist, Willie D, who you know for many, many years, taking this step into professional boxing? We feel like we're going to do it legal, but we've been knocking them out in the street. And he's also known for his real estate investments and community development efforts in Houston. Now, Jay Prince would be a bit of a philanthropist as well. Now, Jay Prince Sr. has actively been involved in philanthropy and community initiatives focused on providing opportunities for disadvantaged youth in Houston, Texas. His efforts have even included supporting education and entrepreneurship programs. Now, although Jay Prince is a man of Houston, Texas, there has also been allegations of his quote-unquote mob ties. Over the years, rumors and allegations have circulated linking Jay Prince to organized crime or mob connections. However, there is no concrete evidence or legal charges to sustain these claims. It is important to distinguish between rumors and verified information when discussing his background and throughout his career. Jay Prince has maintained a reputation for his business acumen, community activism, and influence in shaping the hip hop landscape, particularly in the South. And not only that, Jay Prince will be a voice of reasoning as he does play a vital role in society when it comes down to the industry disputes. Jay Prince has been involved numerous times when it comes down to mediating a situation that had jumped off in the music industry. In order to get these type of things done, Jay Prince would ultimately leverage his influence as well as his connections to resolve disputes and promote community togetherness amongst the hip hop industry. We've seen multiple and numerous occasions of this, Pimp C and Master P, Jay Prince intervened. Drake and Kanye West, Jay Prince intervened. Hell, Jay Prince is like the Honorable Louis Farrakhan when it comes down to the hip hop community and resolving issues. Which brings us here today. What's the deal, YouTube favorites? We're Chris Big Clean Cliff or Cliff World TV. And today, we're going to speak on one of the many times where Jay Prince was able to exert his power, leverage his influence, and retrieve an item back for his friend, Steve Francis, former player of the Houston Rockets. So with no further ado, YouTube family, let's just go ahead and jump into it. Make sure y'all like, comment, subscribe, get this video in the algorithm. Let go. The Vancouver Grizzlies are on the clock and their time is up. Let's go to the commissioner. With the second pick in the 1999 NBA draft, the Vancouver Grizzlies select Steve Francis from the University of Maryland. Steve Francis has his stepdad all in attendance. Before we go any further, I guess it would be sort of wise to let the audience know who Steve Francis is in case they don't know. Because I do realize that it's a lot of young guys to watch these videos, so let me just go ahead and break it down. 
Steve Francis was a former NBA player, and he had a notable career that spanned from 1999 to the year 2008. He was known for his explosive athleticism and scoring ability. Francis primarily played as a point guard. Steve Francis would play at the University of Maryland before the NBA draft, where he was selected as the number two draft overall pick in 1999. And he was ultimately drafted by the Vancouver Grizzlies, though he was traded to the Houston Rockets before even playing the game. Now, once he got to Texas though, Francis quickly became a standout player for the Rockets earning the NBA Rookie of the Year honors in the year 2000. He formed a formidable trio with Catino Mobley and Yao Ming in Houston. But in the year 2004, the Orlando Magic would pick up Steve Francis because he was traded. And he had continued to put up solid numbers, but he faced challenges with injuries. In the year 2006, he would go to the New York Knicks, and this would ultimately be where his basketball career ended. After retiring from the game of basketball, Francis faced personal challenges and legal issues, but has since focused on various business ventures. While playing in Houston, Texas, Steve Francis would be mentioned in about 110 different rap songs. One of the most notable rap songs would be on Lil Flip's Game Over when he said on franchise like the Houston Rockets, every eight months is when I usually drop it. So so where would the disconnect between Steve Francis and the new rappers of Houston come from? Nope, oh, that's the story that we're going to investigate today. As y'all can tell from the title, Sauce Walker and some of the members of TSF were able to relieve the former NBA star of his nice 14 karat gold 576 gram Cuban link over a half a kilo off of his neck. Now you got to know that ain't no average person walking up to a six foot seven human being and relieving him of a 14 karat gold Cubana link chain. So as always YouTube family, the truth Oh, it's much stranger than fiction. It's much stranger than fiction, man. Now, after being in the NBA, Steve Francis would struggle with his addiction, uh, something that he's very vocal about, and he's went on many platforms and spoke on it. Now, there was an incident in a Houston nightclub where a guy by the name of Stack Five would put the squeeze on Steve Francis's Cubana link. It's alleged that Steve Francis was on stage filling himself full of alcohol. Now, as I stated, Stack Five squeezed on that chain. But a lot of y'all don't even know who Stack 5 is, do you? We talking about Steven Jackson, another person who played in the National Basketball Association. Stack 5 would also claim to be the illegitimate twin brother of George Floyd. Now, what y'all don't know about Steven Jackson is he's a big old blood. A black? All the rock is red like a pepperoni pizza, bro. Blood, you the illest what my dogs coast to coast say. Cuz get it cracking. I guess that's what the locals say. Now, rumor has it, E. Francis was on that stage talking crazy. He was full of that liquor. Didn't give a damn who was in the picture. He was talking out the side of his neck. The same neck that just so happened to have a beautiful 14 karat gold Cubana link chain on it. Now, also in attendance on that stage with Steve Francis and that boy Steven Jackson would be the Sauce Factory. Sosa Man, Rizzo Rizzo, Sauce Walker. And at the time, Jazz Prince was actually the manager for the Sauce Twins, which would be Sauce Walker and Sancho Saucy. Now, although Stack 5 was the one who sat up there, you understand me, and relieved Steve Francis of such nice, valuable medals around his neck, Sosa Man of the Sauce Factory, of course, would end up with such valuable, precious metals that were formed into jewelry for the neck of Steve Francis. Now, it's alleged that Steven Jackson didn't even want the chain. He wasn't necessarily snatching the chain. He was just grabbing a man by the neck, and just so happened, the chain came off. Now, what I will say is whoever made this chain for Steve Francis, y'all deserve a medal because it took a while for that chain to actually come. As a matter of fact, I'm pretty sure that they unlatched it and then removed the jewelry off of his neck because as y'all can see from the video that i'm about to display to y'all that boy went down with the chain man he went down with the chain man <laughs> Yeah. 
Now, I know y'all wondering, man, Cliff, why was Steven Jackson, a.k.a. Stack 5, remove the chain off of Steve Francis's neck? And as I always told y'all, bro, the truth is much stranger than fiction. Now, if y'all can tell from this video that I'm presenting to y'all, there's two separate incidents where Steven Jackson is putting his hands around Steve Francis's neck. And it would actually be the first incident where Steve Jackson is wearing the white tee with the red writing and Francis is standing above him on a speaker that'll jump off the second incident. Now, Steve Jackson would actually go to ESPN and he would be asked about the first incident. And I'm gonna just go ahead and let that clip play for y'all. Well, when's the last time your mom had to scream at you about something? Uh... <laughs> probably the other, probably the other day when this Steve Francis stuff came out on the internet. <laughs> yeah, well, Stephen, why, 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 why'd you have to gra grab Steve Francis by the throat? This video came out. You say the video was old, but we're wondering yeah. what happened in the first place. You guys seemed to be cool, and then you had your hands around his neck. Well, we were never cool. I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't hang with him. You know, I don't call him. Like we're we're not even we've never been in the same circles. Uh, I was paid to be at a, a, a concert I had with uh, another uh, rapper named Rocco. Shout out to Rocco. And um, it was too packed for me to get to the stage because the, the club was so packed. So one of my homeboys, which is the DJ, his name DJ Tho, he just told me to come do my do my show in the DJ booth. So I go in the DJ booth because it was a short walk. And as soon as I start rapping, he jumps up on the back of the on the back of the stage on the back of the DJ booth. And as he was 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 didn't know one word to my song, I don't know why he jumped up there. He bumped me uh, two, well, two times with his midsection. I felt this belt bumping me on my neck. Uh -oh. So, the th so yeah. So, the, so I'm like, I'm, I look at him the second time, and I don't say it. So the third time he does it, and I almost fall on the DJ. So I, you know, I turn around, I stop rapping. The music still going. I ask him to get down. He said something crazy. One thing led to another. My hand end up on his throat, and next thing you know, he in cuffs. <laughs> but the, 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 the police. Now, as I stated earlier on in this segment. The old man, J. Prince Sr., has power and pull in the city of Houston, Texas. This is something that we all know and it's not really up for debate. Now, at the time, Sauce Twins were dealing with management through Jazz Prince, one of James Prince Sr.'s sons. So honestly, it'll only take a couple phone calls in order for Steve Francis to get that beautiful Cuban link cane back in his possession. Now, although Stack 5, AKA Steven Jackson, was the one that sat up there and relieved Steve Francis of such valuable jewelry, Sosa Man the one ended up with it, and he'd go to social media and say that since they had so much respect for the old man, Steve Francis, you can go and get the chain back home. But this time my home got this chain back, but Sosa got the chain. I damn sure don't need it. I got my own sauce right here that's way more flavor. Only reason why we're giving this back is because of the respect that we got for the old man. And that's on sauce. Straight up. The only Out of respect. Just out of respect for the old man, Steve Francis was able to get that chain back. But they would ask Sosa Man and Rizzo Rizzo about this situation on an interview on thisis50.com. Something happened with y'all that Steve Francis got jammed up. <laughs> I <laughs> accurate. That was just a big ass misunderstanding. <laughs> no, no, break it. Francis, uh, right uh, here. You know, it was just, it, it was just a big, <laughs> so ass, big man. misunderstanding, you know? You know, uh, uh, it was just like, it was just a mi misunderstanding. That's all I got. <laughs> what happened like, to Steve Francis? You know, he, he, just, he just, he just. Shout out to Steve Francis did. and Maserati oh, Music, man. man. He got a label? Confrontation had happened. Shit. Yeah, confrontation. <laughs> to where he got in the mix and, and you know, things happen like that. But he you know, always getting jammed up, though. Yeah. You know, that's, that's just how his <laughs> lifestyle is, I guess. Yo. But you know, when you talk to the wrong, when you, when you mess the wrong person, same thing, you've been wrong area, you know what I'm saying? Things happen, but you know. No, no, no. Pa, what happened to Steve Francis so they can understand? <laughs> I don't know. Apparently, it was, I don't know if it was you all show, but. Sauce was in the vicinity, allegedly, and Steve Francis, you just saw him one place turned up, and then next thing you know, you see him on the floor, and then one frame you see his chain, and then the other frame you don't see his chain. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so is this, is Nobody knows what happened, but he got it back eventually, but he got it back. He got that, it back. that footage was like crazy. So you got oh, Steve got, Francis' got, chain back then? I got this. Oh, oh. So you got <laughs> now, everything in this story is alleged, 
I'm not saying it to be a hundred percent fact. I'm tired of y'all jumping in the comment section, bro. It's not a hundred. It's all alleged, bro. Y'all can do the math. Put the story together yourself. Go out there and dig your own information up. And since there was clearly crimes involved inside of this story, I'm inclined to say that everything was alleged. Everything in this story is alleged. This is hoodwink, hood lore. I could have made this up. I could have AI the whole video. All those videos could all be AI. I could have just made everything up. All right, so everything is alleged. But uh, anyways, YouTube family, that is the story of James Prince Sr. and his mini run-in, mini, mini intervention. It wasn't big. It's a little mini tiny intervention. You know what I mean? With Sosa Man and the TSF guys and South Walker. But anyways, you two family man, as y'all already know, it's your Crisp and Clean Cliff of Cliff World TV. As always, we're going to sit up there and stay down until we come up together, man. That's just the law at this point. And as y'all already know, man, I'm gone. You two family. I'm going to need y'all to tap in with my girl here by Honey Man. She is CEO, loctician, beautician, all-around miracle worker out of Spokane, Washington. But if that bag is right, she will fly to you. Now, I'm telling y'all, I done seen her turn some solid tools into dimes some solid tools into dimes. Some weight at the back of the line so you ain't got to wait in line. Said, man, if you need your retwist, if you need your edges laid, if you don't want to go outside looking played, man, because I'm telling y'all, some of y'all, I seen y'all out there last weekend and you was looking a little crushed. And she do kids here too. And I seen some of y'all kids pictures, man. And, hey, man, on picture day, they here was napping. So if y'all didn't have nobody to do it, I'm telling y'all, putting y'all down right now. Here by honey, your booking done right now. You can't let your appearance be the interference. Don't let your appearance be the interference, I'm telling you. Don't try to lay your edges yourself. It ain't going to work. Hair by Honey. She is a professional. She does this for a living. Get your book it right now. It might be a line, but for the right dime, you might be able to jump the line. YouTube family. I'm going to need y'all to tap in with my boy Mimosa, man. And my been with Mimosa in his podcast. Look. If you're in the greater Northwest area and you're trying to get exposure, man, and you know you deserve that spotlight and your music really hidden, Mobby with Mimosa is the place to go. I'm telling y'all, man, he running the multimedia blog site and he'll pull up for the interview. He's been seen on camera with Big Sad 1900 collaborator Lil Booth out in Tacoma and that interview went yay yay. He did an interview with XD Stacks. FTFKT, and man, he even got me and BBDL on the interview, man. Listen, if you're in the greater Northwest area and you want some exposure, I'm telling you, Vancouver, Tequila, Tacoma, Seattle, Kennewick, Royal Orange, Renton, Belltown, tap in with Mobby with Mimosa, man. He on the rise. I'm letting y'all know, man, he one of my guys. I'm putting a stamp on it. Look out for Mobby with Mimosa podcast and make sure y'all subscribe to the channel. Listen, make sure y'all subscribe to the channel don't inbox me any more links if you in the greater northwest area and you rap and you make music i don't want to see no more links don't inbox me any more links i need to see you on mobbing with mimosas podcast then i'll pay attention youtube family i'm gonna need y'all to check out my boy arian man coming out of california he a streamer He's a YouTuber, and he's an artist. Let's just say he's multi-talented. I mean, hey, the boy could be the next Constantinette. Twitch, holler at my boy. Send him a bag. To everybody that be on Twitch, even Discord. Man, y'all need to holler at my boy, Eric Young, man. This the wave of the future. Live streamers are creating a new millionaires, and I got faith in my boy, Eric Young. I mean, he was smart enough to get the promo. Y'all make sure y'all tap into his show, Stay Cloudy. Subscribe to him on Twitch, area. Man, look, he gaming, he doing music, he live streaming, blunt rolling contest, Mario Kart, you name it. Like I told y'all, this the wave of the future, man. Now let's jump into the video y'all been waiting for. I'm pippin' like I'm done one. I'ma stop at the store, sell me an onion. Go and get some backwoods in the back of Funyun. Let a nigga play me sweet and he gon' meet the honey bun. I ain't ride with it unless he got a hundred round drum. Hit that nigga with the drink, he gon' butt up, but I'm bum.